Around a month ago, my Cooper Fermento plug-in hybrid developed an electric drive fault. It said, electric drive not working correctly, please contact workshop. So I contacted the workshop and they were so busy that it took a month for it to actually get booked in. I do have the results now from that diagnostic and it isn't really very good. I thought it might just be a sensor. You know, I had it on the diagnostics myself. There wasn't really much there, so it kind of led towards more of a software. So it did actually go in. It had its MOT, which is fine. It got an advisory for the warning light, but we all knew that. Everything else was fine. And it also got a software update, but the light's still on. Problem now is they've diagnosed the fault to be battery cooling pipes need replacing. Now the Cooper garage, what I put my fermenter in, isn't a high voltage specialist. I didn't know this. So now I have to take it to another garage, which is about 200 miles or so away, maybe 150 miles away. You know, I live in rural Scotland. It's not exactly where we've got loads of Cooper garages around. So anyway, that's beyond the point. I now have to take it to another garage, which then has to get re-diagnosed to confirm what the Cooper garage originally found. This is a little bit of an issue and it's a little bit worrying. And, and I've looked at the um, battery cooling reservoir again and it kind of looks the same it was a little bit low last time i did the video about a month ago i'll stick it on the b-roll now and it kind of looks the same but it's still a little bit low you know you've still got the actual tie lock so you can't break into the system if you do break into the system it's definitely out of warranty but i think it might be covered in warranty this so if the battery cooling is wrong it means the battery coolant is leaking somewhere if it's low if it's leaking somewhere, it means it's leaking onto the battery, which is obviously not a good sign. I'm now going to stop charging this Cooper every night. I charge the Cooper every night. I own the Nissan Leaf before this, believe it or not. I do own a Land Rover Defender as well. Obviously, it's the main part of the channel. But I do like cars, and I do like various machines. I like electric cars. I like petrol cars. I like diesel cars. I just like any cars. doesn't matter what they're powered by. If they're nice to drive, they're nice to look at. I like them. Now the Cooper Fermento has got a eight year, 100,000 mile battery warranty. Well, I'm going to read out what they actually found. So carried out GAF, GFF, I, I assume it means general fault finding, um, found coolant temp sensor, checked and found relevant TPI, temperature pressure indicator, I believe it is. Requires new battery cooling pipes. So I'm saying that if it requires new battery cooling pipes, th this is fundamental in the safe working operations of the high voltage battery. Without battery cooling, you cannot cool the battery if it gets too hot. Therefore, the battery will go into thermal runaway or anything like that. Now, I don't believe this car is going to set on fire. If, you know, I think you have to be very, very unlucky for an electric car to actually set on fire. But I am going to stop charging this car daily and I am not going I am now not going to store it in the garage overnight. Not that I've lost confidence in it, it's just that I would sooner err on the side of caution. I managed to get it booked into the battery um, sent specialist in a week's time. So, you know, it's moving quickly, but I'm not really keen on stomaching the bill for a less than four year old, less than 70,000 mile car. And that kind of brings me on to the issue is that once I fix this car, I personally fix this, but once this car gets fixed, it is getting sold. I am not keeping this car. I love the look of it. I love the drive of it. I love the economics of it, but it's just so complicated. Like I have a Nissan Leaf before, you know, it's got an electric motor hooked up with a high voltage battery. And then I've got my Land Rover Defender that again, is pretty rudimental as well but i believe it's the best of both worlds the fev but the problem is when they start going wrong or when they start getting you on the used market i'm going to go all or nothing i'm either going to get all petrol all diesel for my next daily car or i'm going to get all electric now when i got my nissan leaf last time i got it in 2018 there wasn't very many choices you know this nissan leaf only did 150 miles and i did eventually sell it because it just couldn't do long distances We'll get onto that on another video if you show so desire the reasons why I sold it. But I don't know. I think I'm not going to keep this car much more than four years. 
and then get it sorted, get it tarted up, and then get it away, and then look at another daily. So a little bit of a worrying time here. I believe it will be re will be covered under the warranty, but you know we'll wait and see. I stuck it in like ChatGPT or something, one hundred twenty five pounds an hour or to one hundred fifty pounds an hour is what Cooper sort of roughly charge. Looked at the actual like layouts of how to take the battery out, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and it came between nine hundred and sixteen hundred pounds to do the work. Hopefully this is covered under warranty, but like I said, if I have to stomach the bill myself, it is absolutely getting sold after it's done. But do you have the Cooper Fermento? Have you just developed this fault? What is it? Please drop it in the comments below and let me know because it's a little bit of a worrying time here. And I think it might be a common fault as well. The battery pipes, they might have got corroded, they might have got shaken around. They might have just not been fitted right. Who knows? But... I'll keep you updated in a week's time or two weeks time, however long it takes. It's just a quick video of my trials and tribulations with my Cupra. Love this car. Love the look of it. Love the color of it. Love the drive of it. It's such a unique car. It's such a nice tell. Love tech as well. It's got a nice techie screen. For, for, it is a little bit fumbly sometimes, but you do get used to it pretty quickly. But I think it might be time to say goodbye to this car soon. So follow along for the journey of this Cupra's repair. And I am now documenting this just in case I need to look back on it. I'll see you next time.